It is a pleasure to continue our study about the family and to see today wise words for families. We remember that God is the founder of the family and he made it with a purpose that they should work together serving their creator. And that would bring as a result the multiplication of happiness and of the family members. The means of it can be only one that is the love of God with all its ingredients. And the source of it can only be one that is God who is the source of love, the only source of love. He made that this marriage should be without an end of Adam and Eve, but because of sin, everything came to an end that he had created. And so even the marriage finds its end with death and with the breaking of the laws that God put there to govern marriage. Now, in the lesson today, we have wise counsels to families, wise words. But there is yet a problem that I have seen. I'm grown up in a Christian family. I have been grown up now for, and I have 55 years, under reading the Bible and the wise words, because here are wise words. And yet, it looks like it does not help. Even though the words are wise and they would bring great things to those who put them into practice, even though that they read it, those who think they got it, when you look to their lives, it's just a theoretical approach, not something substantial. And the cause of this is because the wise words of the Bible, we don't know how to interpret them. We don't know how to evaluate them. Because God created us so that our reason, our spirit, is like a scale. And he cannot take something in which is not according to the truth. So how can I read the Bible and still miss the point? I do that because... I don't know what is the truth. By which shall I measure what I read? Because we can read whatever we want and it will not enter us except by our evaluation. That's how God created the Spirit. He must take in what he thinks is the truth. So let's see the Bible verse that we have at the beginning of our lesson, the Proverbs 3 five, six, and I read uh, five to eight. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy whole body and marrow to thy bones. So, beautiful words. But we give it to ten people and we get ten results. Not results that uh, complement each other, but they are contradicting each other. So, how do we properly interpret the words? There are only two ways of interpretation. There are only two ways. Either... I live out of the false identity where I say I'm God and I am the scale. And then I trust my own evaluation and ability in order to think and interpret properly. Or I know that I'm a created being and then I trust outside of myself because a scale has not the balances in it. The information comes from out and the, the measurement comes from out. I just the one that uh, uses both of them. So if I'm a created being, then I trust the scale, which is outside of me, in order to think and interpret properly. So when we take the wise words with unreason, which means I am a God, then I am the scale. And since I'm being the scale, of course, the truth is me. So 
my subjective evaluation becomes that by which I read and not only read, but by which I interpret what I have read. And then, of course, the interpretation of the information is wrong. So let us put that a little bit into practice by these words here. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. What does that mean? And lean not unto thine own understanding. How can you trust the Lord? Now, if you don't have the law and the function of the human being, understanding, trusting is taking, then you might be very confused, thinking, okay, just trust the Lord and he will do that what you have to do. You will say, acknowledge him, so just ask him that he shall do something, and then he shall direct thy path. And so you go through all the Bible, and you take those Bible verses where parents sighed to their children and said, you have to honor me, because you see the Bible says, honor thy parents, and uh, you find those wise words that says, he who, does, who hates his son neglects the rod, uh, of education. So all this, you will have a great mixture and a total misunderstanding of what is written. Because you unconsciously put yourself as the evaluation of what you read. That's why we are so confused in Christianity. That's why we get never to unity or complement each other but are always in contradiction, no matter which denomination, no matter which uh, faith someone goes, it is always the same. We have the same Bible and we fight about the same Bible verses. The one reads it like this, the other reads it like that, because each one of them unconsciously, I would say, because of unknowledge of the law, put their own subjective evaluation of the truth. And if you look to all the methods of interpretation, you will find they're all subjective. It's none objective. The only way to become objective is to know who am I. And then I will put my trust on the scale. And who is the scale? Who is the truth? Of course, it's the law of nature. But the law of nature is an expression of God. So in the moment I take the scale in order to interpret the Bible or whatever I read, it doesn't matter which information, then I will understand it correctly. Then I know trusting the Lord with all that heart means you take from God. That is, you say, okay, how shall I do things? You don't trust that you know it better, but you see the scale you encounter. How shall this be done? And you would not lean then on your own subjective interpretation. But you would say, okay, Lord, this is a nice word, but how can I understand it? I must understand it. Reason was made to bear this way. We must understand the things, but we need a measurement by which we do that, and that is the law, because it's an expression of God. In all thy ways acknowledge him. That is, you know you're always dependent on him. That's trust. And then he shall direct thy path. So shall he direct thy path? No. You orient yourself after him because you take his law as your uh, guidance. Be not wise in thine own eyes. So don't trust yourself. That's be not wise in your own eyes. Don't trust that the way you interpret the things without a scale, is right. You can only trust the scale for interpretation of the words. Fear the Lord, which is nothing else than trust Him, and depart from evil, which is nothing else than trust yourself or be dependent on humans. And it shall be health to thy navel or to thy, bo to thy flesh, and marrow to thy bones. So you see the trust in God, which without the law, you cannot know how it works, will 
all the wise words we read in the Bible will have no power to be implemented. This is why it's so important before we enter this lesson with about the wise words, about the councils, especially on education, we must understand the scale. We must know things that otherwise, when we don't know them, we are just very lost. So we must know the state of man at his birth. And we have seen this, and I will repeat again and again, at our birth, we are all poor, broken, imprisoned, blind, and oppressed. No choice to avoid the evil or to do the good or the right thing. Every child is born like this. None of us were born on a neutral um, path. Like most people think, we can choose then from here to do good or evil. None of us is born neutral. We can never be neutral. We are always either in one or in the other relationship. So we are born in trust to humans, to people, and separated from God through our identity that believes we are God. And by this, all decisions that a human does are all unfree and wrong. So this is the input. This is the output. This is the cause. This is the effect. So, understanding this, we know that when our children are born, they are not born free. We must now, through education, bring them to freedom. Bring them into a state of trusting God so they change where they take from, they change the cause. But for this, there is a prerequisite that is the idea who I am, the lie that I believe I am born with must be crucified, must be destroyed. And the new identity must take place, which separates me then from humans, Lucifer and animals. So this then results that I am become rich. I am not oppressed anymore. I am free. I am seeing and I am happy. My decisions are all correct and free. So this is the new birth must bring this change. And salvation and education is the same thing. It must be, and it's the contest, it's the, it's the battle between truth and error. And that's why we must know we are born in the error. We are born far away from God, not neutral. We are death. We are born death. It's just grace that keeps us alive. And if the gospel would never come to us, if the light would never come to us, we would just pass through life as dead people dying then finally. So God wants to uh, rescue humanity. But for this, it must understand first its state. So I want to show that with the stove. I use this element just to make sure we understand the point. A stove which is made to be dependent. The creator says the stove needs to be dependent on a 110 volt or 220 volt connection. The stove has no choice on what source it has to be connected to. This is the legal connection. Then the stove will work properly and it's not under law what the stove cooks. He can cook a billion of meals. That's his liberty. There is no law that governs the cooking. There is only a law that governs the source. You can cook on this stove as long as it's legally connected as much as you want. That's freedom. So, the same is when you take the stove and put it to the wrong dependency. It's an illegal connection and it does not work. So you cannot put any cooking there. You are captive. You are captive. So the problem of humanity is not here in the effect. 
The effect just shows that he's in an illegal connection. So every child is born with the wrong connection. He needs love. God made him to trust. The only way to get that love is by trust. And since he is God, he thinks he does not need to trust anyone. So he subconsciously trusts people, animals, and Lucifer. And he has no choice, as long as he thinks he's a God, to trust here. Because he must trust somewhere. There's no choice to not trust. And also, if he trusts there, there is no love in there. So he will be in an illegal connection and his decisions are all unfree and wrong. So I repeat these principles again and again so that we understand our children are born in an error. And if we want to help them, we must know the state of their birth. Because the greatest frustration with parents is in education. They want to educate a child in a good behavior. And they don't know the child cannot behave well. And if it just does it, being connected to that person to please that person, it's mom or it's dad or whoever it is, they want to please to get something from them, so they behave outwardly correct, but inside they remain unchanged. When Jesus was on earth, he made it very plain to Nicodemus and to all others that we find Nicodemus and the rich young ruler who were Christians, who were believers, who were people of faith, so to say. They were outwardly fine. Yes, they were listening to some extent to the grace of God, but they were not in the legal connection. And so he said, if you're not born again, no choice. That's why if our problem would be from education, then we would change education. But our problem is a birth problem. So only through the new birth, I can become different. That's the first thing. But the new birth is not possible that I should connect to God, except I understand that I am living a lie. And I must switch to the truth that I am a created being, not a God. Only then my connection to God is possible. And then my decisions will be free and right. Then my outward behavior would be clear, not only in good times, like it is on those who are bound on people, but in all times. He who is connected on God shows that in difficulties, he has no problems. He still behaves correctly because he's connected to the right source. The other who has no problems might uh, behave correctly, but he might be in the time of trial, showing that he's still connected on people, not on God. So this is crucial to understand. If we want to educate our children, and we must educate ourselves as well, and even that's even more important that both works can only be done understanding the truth about ourselves, understanding our condition in which we are born and how we can get from this inborn problem into a new birth. So education is not an external change of behavior. Education can never be an external change of behavior. It's not behaviorism. It must be an internal change of the lie that we are born with about ourselves into the truth. So there is an inner thing to be changed. And to this inner thing, only the own person has access. So a mother and a father cannot change their child. The child must change itself using the power of God by taking the truth instead of the lie. But for this, the child must first see its condition. That's why the requirement is first, the lie of my false identity needs to be recognized. I must see all. There is something wrong in me that forces me to do the wrong outside of me. So 
since this is unconscious, how can we change that? You see, education and salvation, if it would be an outward change of behavior, then we could put all in, uh, all in those, these therapies that people invented of, uh, of behavior change and behavior change. Lifestyle is nothing else than behavior change. And we will do this in, in, in the whole world. We just change outward things. Never change in the connection. And if the devil would like to fool us, he would make us to have the best lifestyle, to do the right things, and we would be like the Pharisees who outwardly were perfect, but inwardly they were rotten. And Jesus said, you are graves, painted graves. So you're dead inside, but outside you look like very nice painted. If the devil could do this with us, he would just be very happy. Because then the error would go deeper and deeper. And we would never realize that something internal in us is wrong about what we think about us. So in all our education plans, and when I see them, I'm getting sometimes very sad that we have not understood Education is a change of an inner situation that will have a change of an outside, of course. But that then comes from inside out, from cause to effect. And not uh, change the effect without changing the cause. And this is the devil's greatest, uh, I would say, uh, deception, changing the outward, putting the right lifestyle in, uh, doing the right things, put your child to behave well on the table or wherever. And it goes for a what a time. But you lose it later because that thing is still there. It's not taken off and it will fool the child whenever it comes into a difficult situation. This is why we need to know the child only can educate itself by understanding the lie. But you cannot see the lie before you cannot see the truth. So parents must do that. But how? So we can go to that what we don't see by that what we see. So the consequences which are visible indicate the lie. So whenever one is in bondage, he does not what do what he wants. He indicates he must betray himself. He must lie. He must believe about himself a lie. Everyone who is impatient is an indication that he has a wrong identity. Everyone who shows aggressivity or anger or competition. I played with my, uh, my grandson and... Uh, there was a game of who, who win and, and, and it was yeah just a little thing but I saw how he reacted when he lost and I said we have to stop all this kind of playing because we nourish we nourish the lie in ourselves and then you see how miserable the child feels when he loses and so we must understand oh competition is an indication that I must betray myself. So from inside, I must change something that I get out of competition with everyone. When we fight each other, when we have violence among, when there is possessivity in the child, we see, oh, let's see where does come to that from. It must come from the lie that I'm a god. I possess things. So then I have to try, try, show the child that this possessivity is a betrayal. And he, if he's a created being, then he must possess nothing because that's a deception, thinking he has something. Not even his body, it's just his life. Nothing is his. So I must show from the result, from the effect, 
I can go to the cause. But we don't want to change the effect, we want to change the cause. Then the effect is included. When children are inaccessible, when people do not want to listen, we know they must be in self-betrayal. When they are unreasonable, when you cannot discuss certain things, you know that's an indication of someone who is a prisoner of his own understanding of himself. When they are cunning, so when we betray, when we are fraudulent or unfaithful, when a child starts to lie, we say, oh, very well, we don't go against the lie of the child because that would be stupidity. That lie just discovers to us its, its problem in the heart. And so we say, okay, it's not the lie, the issue. It's that the child does something in itself. So what does it believe that it makes the child lie? Because I must change that idea about itself so that it becomes the truth. Then lie is gone. But even if I try here to, to make the child to not lie or to, it still won't avail nothing or when the child is unjust. So the effect is a great help of showing the root. But usually when children do something wrong, the parents get upset. Why do they get upset? First, they have their own lie in themselves because they think the child is their possessor. They think the child must obey to them. They don't know that the child must obey God, not to them. So they take the place of God and they say, the child must obey and if they don't obey, I must revenge myself. And they do it spontaneously without a choice. Now they could have one. So that's why ch parents will be accountable if they will not search their hearts so that they are able to not get angry on their children when they do wrong, but say, oh, my child, that's good. It came out. Now we can deal with the cause. You see, if people would not get sick, how could I ever show them that they have a problem in their heart? How could I? But thank God for sickness. Thank God for that he lets things come out that on the effect we can see that very wrong thing of self-deception. So let us not fight effects, friends. Let us just take the effects as, an, as a light shining to us on the cause that is behind it. And let us work on the cause that is behind it. Because only that is reality and will avail anything. All, all others is deception. So we are not getting angry when we see the effect in the child. Because we say, okay, the child is born with this. And now it comes out. Now I can address the mind of the child and say, okay, child, you see what you do? There's something wrong. You understand? You see it? I know you don't do it because you want to, but you're born with the chains. But these chains, would you not like to get them away? And look, the chain is this and this lie that you believe about yourself, and you show him the truth. And then the child has a choice. That's the only choice we have to choose the truth. And the moment he chooses the truth, its connection goes to God, and that situation will be solved. And consequences indicate when someone is free, in free. It's patient, it's loving, it's faithful, it's without guile and righteous. It indicates the truth in his heart. Not under nice circumstances, but under difficult circumstances. You remain loving, you remain patient, you prove that you are in Christ. You prove that you are in the truth. You see, people think that truth is a doctrinal idea. That you believe certain things doctrinally. No. The truth and the lie, the battle is about who we are. That's the truth. That's why Jesus says, I am the truth. Because he says, I am the true man that showed you how to live. In dependence on your father, in dependence on God, then your work are, are free. Jesus is the truth about who we are. It's not a doctrinal truth. And it will be shown in the effects, because there is no cause 
that not bring an effect. And the effect proves if someone is in the lie or in the truth. So education must change the child, must bring the child from a self-deception into no self-deception anymore. But this is an internal problem. This is what we must teach the child. Because I offer the child the truth when it's so that it sees the lie and then it gets a choice. Before, you say, don't do this, the child will do it for a while, but it's, it will do it again and again because it is still bound. It's still in the wrong connection because it still has not destroyed the lie in his heart. So let us see in which difficulty the child is born. And I put this picture here so that we see this, this little boy has an issue. He's behind the window. He sees not things correctly. He has needs. No choice for his needs. He has those needs that God put in the human spirit in Eden. Love, respect, freedom, safety, justice, harmony, well-being, recognition, appreciation, peace, and so on. All these needs are there. But now he's born thinking he's a god. He does not know that consciously. And now he, he believes or he's convinced that his parents have to give them and satisfy his needs. So he expects the parents to love him. He expects the parents to respect him, to give him liberty, to protect him, to deal justly with him. Just yesterday, I spoke with a patient that uh, uh, was upset with her parents, with her mom, because mom did treat her brother different than her. And she considered that as an injustice. By what kind of a thing is that injustice? Because God said the firstborn inherits all things. The others, they just get a part of it. Is that justice? Yes. It's another justice that we think that is equality. No. Mom is free to give the one that and the other that. Who forces her? But the child thinks. That's not mother's freedom. I have to get the same love or the same attention that she gives to my sibling. And so the child is in a confusion. And this lady was an older lady that I spoke with. And she carries this from her childhood with her. Unknowingly, not knowing that that destroys her body. Because she cannot respect her parents. If you have an unjust parent, how can you ever respect him? So you see there is a deep problem in the child's way to see things. He sees them the opposite like they are. So he is the just one that, just, that judges his parents if they don't do justice, if they are not harmonious, if they do not recognize him or appreciate him. The prince of princes. Or a princess of princesses. So that is a great difficulty in which the child unconscious is born. And he believes he's right. He believes the parents must give me that. And he stays in disbelief a whole life, no matter if he's born in a Christian family or not. Because the Christians have not understood the problem of humanity. And it's great problem. Why do we need a savior? Why do we need to get out of a problem? It's because of our birth. That's why there must be a new birth. Now, what is the reaction of the child when its needs are not met like he thinks they need to be met? When his parents do not meet his needs, then he protests. And there are many, many ways to protest. He refused to eat. Oh, they, they can be so not eating, children. Uh, it's amazing that a mom is now in need because the child must eat. And she doesn't understand the protest and feeds the child with force. Not ever changing anything. 
in the cause of its protest, which must be a change in her, first of all. Children, when they are not respected and loved, and they try to control their parents. When they have parents that are fighting each other, the child will do everything to control them, to not fight anymore. He will do everything to make them happy. He will try that. And he will be very, very uh, miserable by trying that. And his diseases will come from there. Then he will show it through uncontrolled behavior. And yes, there are multiple reactions, but I just share a few general ones, root things. And then disease. Disease is a, is a protest of the child's spirits because his needs, his spiritual needs are not met. That's disease. It's a forcing the good on others. It's a protest. It's I try something, it's impossible. Does the child or we do that consciously? Of course not. But here is something. Here is something that we need to understand. We must understand that a child has no choice. And we also, until we don't know it. That's why parents need to avoid acting against the needs of the child. So they must always be loving, respecting. I haven't hardly seen, I don't know if I ever saw parents who respect his child. Respect does not mean that I am not an authority. But to take that child as, a, as an entity that only itself can decide and govern itself. That's respect. I know he must do it. And I just, I'm there as a parent to help him. But in order to have access to his deceased deceived heart, I must go through that deception. I must be the person that loves him, that respects him, that cares and that not go shouting or pressing all those things. Then parents get the child. Selfish nature grows. You see, whenever we, when the child is born, it has a small selfish nature. A little one, I would say. And that, through the parents' education, could never grow if they would be wise how to do it. But if they don't know, then whenever you don't meet the child's needs, like you get angry on him, you force him to do this, you condition him and say, you have to eat this first and then you eat that, that's all devilish. Because it doesn't come from God. It is, con we are under condition, but not under conditioning. We are not conditioned. We must do things because we understand them. We are reason with them. And we have to do, we don't do them because of a, of we get something for it as a recompense. I have said to the Lord, I never want to follow you because of fear or because I get, I want something from you. I want to follow you out of conviction that this is right. This is the way to go. Because I might be in a difficult situation. I would say, oh, where is my God who is with me? And I would say, I still do this because it is conviction. I want to serve God of a reasonable conviction of things, not otherwise. So, Parents must avoid going against the needs of a child. So that's why how should do that? What's the crucial question? Do parents want to help the child to get out of the situation, the error it is born into? Do You see, when I see parents that have a handicapped child, how they care for it and how they give all they can. And they don't know that every child is born like that on spiritual matter, that every child is incapable of uh, right behavior is incapable of obedience until the error is not eliminated. 
And so we must fight the error in which the child is born. So what do parents need for this sake? They need time to think. That's why God put mother aside for this high, highly uh, need of the child. But for this mother needs time to think. She must evaluate, must plan, and must know how to implement. Oh, most parents don't think anymore about except outside behavior. They don't take time to think what's in that child that makes him miserable. And they don't take time to know themselves and know their own error and their weaknesses. If mother does not know, why do I get angry when the child does this? Or why does this behavior of the child trigger this in me? If the parent doesn't understand that, how can he help? That's why parents need first Christ, the Savior, in order to successfully execute their high duty. But if they don't know what's, why they need a Savior, if they don't know that the Savior must bring the truth instead of the lie they already believe from their birth to be the truth. Oh, without a Savior. There is no one that can see the truth because he brought us the truth. And the truth is the state about ourselves, as I mentioned this before. So the crucial question is, am I aware of the situation in which my child is born or am I not? Am I aware of my situation in which I am born or am I not? And there is one point that we will discuss in our next hour is the key in education the inner life of the parents is the key for good education. If the parents' inner life is not correct, if they are having issues with themselves or with the in-laws or whoever they have, the child will always try to fix them and will by this destroy itself. So the greatest way in education is the education of the parents. Their inner life, not their outer life. Of course, what's out is, comes from inside. But it's their inner life that the child sees. And even a correct outside behavior, you can never fool a child. He knows your inner life exactly. From your voice, from all those. It's all an unconscious intake of information. You can never fool a child. You can have a fight three uh, rooms back there. He might not hear it and he still perceives it. He knows it. So your inner life as a parent is the decisive key for a good education. And especially the mother's inner life. So we will talk about that in our next hour because there is not time enough to speak about these topics of education, but I hope one day to have just a seminar just about education where we have to put all the things right and go on and having a clear understanding of what we have to do in order to help our children to get out of the misery we are born into. May God help us to reach the goal through our beloved Savior. Amen.